So I have with me uh, Jasmine Murillo, and you are a commercial real estate agent with N N I A I N A I N A I. Okay. Uh, thank you for uh, agreeing to be on uh, be on uh, this interview. I I'm hoping that uh, we can help people out, uh, families in in Eastern Washington, get a better understanding of. Um, I mean, services that you do, um, as you know, we do family law, and uh, we help people prepare for the future with estate planning, defend their families in the family courts, and um, protect their assets um, also in, in bankruptcy. And so, um, first, I mean, how how is the uh, current COVID affected um, affected the commercial real estate? market? It's definitely slowed it down tremendously. Um, across the board, there's multiple extensions going on right now. Most people don't want to close if they're in the process of purchasing. Um, we've had a couple leases that have still gone through for more of those essential businesses, so chiropractors and things like that, that were already in transition. Um, but as far as barbers, I have a barber and a salon owner, everything's somewhat on hold, if not more than likely going to be fully withdrawn, um, just because there's a very much unforeseeable future for salons. From my understanding, I think the other businesses have more of an inclination, but salons, some are saying it might be till August that they're able to be up and running again. And wow. it's just yeah. way too far out for most of them to make moves um, right now. So we've definitely had a halt. There's some transactions that are still going on. Um, a lot of our cash buyers are coming out to play right now just because they're looking at those properties that have been on the market for 180, 365 days now. Um, and cash is king. It's part sure. of it. You know, it, it's a lot more appealing than financing right now because from a lending side as well, the requirements are becoming quite a bit higher depending on what avenue of commercial real estate you're going into. Okay. So, so, so a couple questions that come out of that. Um, First, take me through the process just a little bit in commercial real estate. So my understanding was that once you have signed all the documents, you, you're, you're pretty much, you're going through with everything, but it sounds like that isn't, isn't the case. It's not. Um, so underwriting for commercial is a lot different. It depends on what kind of loan you're going to be using. So if you're a small business owner and you're purchasing something under a 504 or a 7A um, loan, there's different requirements that they have versus a conventional or like an investment purpose. So okay. it takes a lot longer if you're going the SBA route, but that typically um, is more, um, what's the word? It makes more sense on paper for a lot of small business owners because it's not as much cash up front whereas your conventional buyer is going to put substantially more down, 30 to 50% sometimes, depending on the property. Okay. So um, a lot of like barbers, hair, hair stylists are slowing down the process. Is that um, well, I wouldn't even say slowing down. They're just not moving forward anymore. So okay. one, one client in particular, we were in the process of reviewing a lease. Um, and she's just been like, Hey, I just don't have enough cash flow at this time. You know, I have my security deposit and my first month's rent that I was going to pay. And then all of the improvements that I was doing, it doesn't make sense anymore because of where we're at. Mm -hmm. Um, so for her, unfortunately, it's kind of at a complete stop. Whereas the barber, the, the um, lease was already signed. So the owners of the property are like, hey, we really do want them to move in at some point. For now, we'll just do a rent abatement because they're not occupying the space anyways. So it really just depends on where you are at and how willing the um, landlord's able to work with you right now. So have you seen a lot of landlords helping out with, uh, with commercial rent? Yes and no. Um, it depends on the property. Um, I actually held a webinar on Wednesday, kind of going on all of the ins and outs of that. Um, but for the most part, they're trying to work with you. It really depends on their note and their financial um, 
capacity right now. If they're able to give rent, rent abatement, some are, but a lot of them are taking the rent that you're unable to pay and then amortizing it out for the rest of the year or your lease term. Okay. I think though it'll have the biggest hit today, basically May 1st, because it's been the first solid month of businesses being closed. So I think by the 10th, we'll have a better idea of what percentage of rents were captured. Okay. Um, so you, you did a webinar mm -hmm. on Wednesday. Is that up somewhere that people can go find that? It is. It's over on um, Facebook and then it's also on YouTube. So. Okay. So they just search for your name? Yep. Or... Jasmine Murillo, commercial broker, and oh. it'll pop up. Okay. So we'll <laughs> see if we can send some people that way. Cool. So you, you said it, it's getting harder to qualify for some of these uh, loans, these SBA loans? Um, I wouldn't say it's getting harder to qualify for SBA loans right now. It's more conventional, actually, because they're wanting you to have more secured funding. Um, when Right now, I believe it's the SBA 7A program is actually allowing you deferment on your payment until September, I want to say. Um, okay. One of the bankers I work with closely, she sent me the information um, earlier this week, and you can actually defer payment to where it's not going to, you're not having to pay interest as well during that time. I know a lot of the SBA, if you currently have an SBA loan, they're actually making the payments for you on only the SBA side, not the conventional side of it. Okay. Because SBA loans are also two loans in one, if that makes sense. Right. You pay, you pay the lender mm -hmm. and you pay the government essentially exactly and it's the government side that is um for offering forgiveness yes and only certain lenders are offering some relief yes from what i've seen so it depends yeah. depends on who you went it's through. so hard yeah because across the board it, it just depends which i hate giving people that answer but it depends where you're located it depends on who you bank with there's so many factors um i wish it was just a easy yes or no but it's not well, welcome, welcome to my world. Uh, <laughs> that 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 is the classic answer for every attorney because there are when when you're dealing with complex issues, you mm -hmm. there's so many factors and it can go yeah. one way or another, or part way in one yeah. direction. Yeah, so it sounds like it it's getting uh, complicated as well. Mm -hmm. So aside from uh, the current uh, COVID crisis, what should people know about commercial? maybe uh, investing in commercial property or maybe starting a small business? What, what should people know that maybe they haven't thought of? Um, I think going into it, if you're going in as an investor, it's really important to know the tenants that are in the property that you're interested in. Um, I think a lot of investors see a rent roll and see um, the cap rate and everything and it looks good, but they don't know enough history about the tenants. I think that's one thing because I am so local, I've lived here all my life. Um, it really makes a difference because you know what businesses have been around for longer than three years and things like that. Or you know that that business owner has actually always lived here as well and they've kind of been in the community and have a really good following because that's important. Um, yeah. I think that unfortunately some landlords don't get to know their tenants well enough to where they can speak to them or be like, hey, I do own that property and these are, you know, my tenants and this is what they can offer you too, because at the end of the day, your tenants are the ones who bring you the money as an investor. Um, and I think that that's something that's really important, but sometimes looked over because they just look at it from a cash flow perspective, which is obviously important too. But I think when you're dealing with a small town USA, essentially, that does matter. Yeah. So as a, as a agent, you're able to help people do you, do you often find yourself in that counselor role, helping people think through? Investing? Yeah, um, we problem solve every day. <laughs> um, it's probably what I do 80% of the time, whether it's with an investor or a small business owner who's looking to lease or something like that. Um, because the majority of my clients are small business owners who are either looking to lease or purchase their first property, which is really exciting. Um, but typically what is most important for a small business owner is to have a game plan or a business plan. They're the same thing essentially, but to really have it out on paper. And I like to go over it with them and say, Hey, I understand this is where you're thinking it's going to go, but let's say you don't hit those marks as quickly. What can you still financially 
withstand because something like this could happen. You know, there's just different hiccups in the road and it's so much better when we're able to work through it because then if the time comes, you know, six, nine months from now, you're going to call and be like, thank you because I did need that extra thousand dollars or whatever it may be, or, you know, just look into what's more financially responsible for your business. So that way you can potentially stay open for as long as you wish. Right. Yeah. That, that's a big, um, it, it's a big commitment signing a lease mm -hmm. and a lot of people, small business owners don't consider, um, you know, you, you're going to have good months and bad months and that lease is going to be this keep, keep coming along. Yeah. So you have to balance that out with what your present needs are, what future needs are, and what may or may not happen in the market. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yep. It's always good to have a plan and to have someone who's, who's done it enough time and, and seen it happen to help plan it out. Mm -hmm. So um, is there anything else that people should know um, when working with a commercial real estate agent? that maybe you're, you're surprised that they don't know or they're surprised that you can yes. offer that kind of insight? <laughs> um, so the biggest thing, I actually did at residential um, real estate prior to this. And the, the first thing that stuck out to me was how much slower everything is. I think that that was the, the biggest struggle of me even getting into it because residential is so fast paced. Everything is constantly going. Um, whereas commercial, it takes some owners seven to 14 days to get back to you on something. So I think that that's something I always stress with my clients. I'm like, just so you know, it may take longer than a week to hear back. I know that that sounds insane. And I know that you're going to be calling me in three days, but just know we may not hear back. So don't be mad at me about it <laughs> because if I could make people respond, I would. But um, I think that that's the, the biggest thing is how long it really takes to work through um, a transaction, even if it's a lease, some people are like, well, you know, it shouldn't take two and a half months. Sometimes it takes longer than that because there's so much, as you know, in those leases, um, that we need to review and discuss and make sure that you have a clear understanding of what you're signing up for. Yep. Yep. That, uh, there, there's often a lot of little terms. We, we found even looking at lease agreements or purchase agreements that there's things that are, that someone has polished off an old, form or they've cobbled together several and it's mm -hmm. like hey wait a minute paragraph two doesn't really match up with paragraph 18 they contradict right. and, and mm -hmm. you need to you need time to go through there yeah. yeah I mean I'm definitely thankful that we have our essentially standardized leases that were written up by two lawyers because I'm always like I'm not an attorney I this is not my world and I don't want it to be <laughs> you know <laughs> I'm like I like the real estate side of it but that's when we would just reach out to someone else if it gets too complicated because some of them right. do. And I always let my clients know up front. I'm like, Hey, I'm sorry, but I, I don't have the answer. Let's go, you know, reach out to someone that does because I'm liable. And then you're going to have to reap the havoc of it. If you know, we don't have an understanding of this. So. Yep. And then, then they get mad at you. They get mad yeah. at everyone. Exactly. And I'm like, let's just figure it out. It's fine. <laughs> Figure it out beforehand. Take the time to do yes, it. Yes, exactly. Well, I, I appreciate uh, your time. I think uh, I'm I'm out of questions. So, where can people find you um, if they if they want to talk to you more? Where's yeah, the best so way? I um I would say phone call is always nice or email. All of my contact is on my Facebook page. Um, our NAI Tri Cities website has all of our direct contact as well. Um, but I'm pretty much available anywhere right now. We're highly mobile because everyone is. Um, so anywhere you find me, I'm all over social media. Awesome. Well, I'll, I will put that in the uh, description on the videos. And um, that, that's it. Hope, hope awesome. people watch it cool. and, and like it. Well, thank it. you for having me. You bet.